Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. So today I wanted to do a thrift haul because I have been out sourcing because I actually ran out of items to sell, which is a good thing because it allowed me to work through all of my pile up and um, I wanted to touch really quickly on the fact that I, I want to redo my shops and I want to try to get into a higher selling average price and so I'm being a lot pickier with like what I pick up but what I found to to when I tried to source in this way what I'm finding is a lot of the thrift stores and even estates have raised their prices so it's actually harder to find stuff to sell at, at a higher quality that is at an affordable buy-in cost. So that's kind of my current challenge. And so uh, I really struggled to find things. One, one day I was, I think, gone for like four hours and I came back with 10 things. So I don't know. I was starting to get a little bit like worried in a way. I'm like, wow, like I've always been able to go out thrift, fill my whole trunk and come back in one day within just a few hours. But I've also not previously been really picky with what I'm selling. So this is kind of new territory for me. So because I wanted to have enough items to keep selling, I've kind of tried to split it between if it's an affordable cost and it's a, an item that I think will sell relatively well, I'll go ahead and pick it up even if it is in a lower price range, but I am still trying to be overall pickier. And then if I can get those higher ticket items at an affordable enough cost for me to grab them, of course I'm gonna grab those. Okay, <laughs> sorry for the weird angle. I'm filming, the, I'm recording this standing up just to save myself from getting up a thousand times. So yeah, <laughs> it's uh, not the best angle. Anyway. I choose, I just want to touch on the fact that I choose not to share my cost of goods and I hope you can respect that. And the reason is because my channel isn't really like an educational reseller channel in that way. My channel is mostly to share my personal experience with uh, bringing awareness to addiction and also my journey to become like healthier and more balanced, which is something I struggle with a lot because I have that ad addictive and extreme personality. And I'm also starting to share my journey to become a sustainable <laughs> to become a sustainable brand, which is something I'm very passionate about. And because I came from literally nothing when I started my reselling journey, um, I found I found it really interesting, like all the things that you could thrift that my whole life I had mostly been brought up on like mall brands and stuff and I wasn't a thrifter growing up. Like we didn't really, we didn't thrift. I didn't know about that. And so I only discovered that when I, you know, when I got clean and in early sobriety, I was living in halfway houses and homeless shelters because ironically enough, when I got sober is when I sh struggled the most because when you have drugs, people are more than willing to let you stay with them because they want to use the drugs with you. But when you get sober, you become very unpopular very quickly because a lot of doors shut immediately. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm just very passionate about sharing things that I thrift and buy secondhand because that's what I do for a living, selling on Poshmark and eBay. And eventually I hope to have my own website and eventually I hope to make my own products that I can mostly use from recycled, repurposed material. So that's the reason I like to share the things I pick up, not necessarily to show you what it's selling for or what I purchased it for. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let's get into the video. Of course, if it's I picked it up for myself, I'm more than happy to share the cost with you because I'm not selling that and I don't feel weird about that. So, all right, without further ado, I picked up some really fun vintage pieces this time. So let me start with one I put already in my inventory. I'll put a picture up here. It's this Jacqueline Ferrar, which is not typically like a brand that I would pick up. And I even considered not grabbing it because of the brand, but the leather was so good on it. 
I figured if nothing else, if nobody ends up wanting this coat for around the price I'm hoping to get for it in, I figured if nothing else, I can cut it up and repurpose it into leather bags, which I think would be really cool because I just got a bunch of leather working tools. So I'm also thrifting like with the intent to kind of mess around with items in that way. But I don't know. I don't think I can bring myself to cut this up because it's just like that, just that long trench coat. You know, you wear it over a sweatsuit and it still looks cool. Um, all right, moving on. Next up, we have this little bucket hat. Um, I really have, have nothing else to say about that. I just liked it, so I grabbed it. And next up we have, these are Madden Girl little booties. I do well with selling ankle boots, and the only downside to these is I can't find the size on them anywhere, and I don't think I would, I know I wouldn't have picked them up if I didn't see the size because when items don't have a size I think they are like so I think they're so much harder to sell because I can measure the insole but you basically have to wait for somebody that is going to you know buy them not knowing for sure the size and just going off the measurements so that was kind of a bad pickup if they fit me I guess I could keep them um <laughs> Okay, it looks like Nico put his little horse on here. <laughs> okay, these are some just like duck boots, which I love selling these types of boots, but I actually picked these up for myself because if you can see the brand, it's not really one that will be good for reselling. Um, but I think these are going to be super fun to style with other items, especially like every fall and winter season. I keep on stock what I call model shoes and I learned that working in retail. So you just, you have shoes like this and a lot of white ones and like solid colored ones or very basic looking boots that you can use to model with a bunch of different outfits for cover shots. So these are gonna be model shoes. These were $6. Okay. Next up, we have these Circus by Sam Edelman. I like the, um, ooh, what's happening with my face? Okay. I just like the kind of classic style to these. I didn't see this little imperfection on the back, so kind of another dud. I'm going to have to sell these really, really low. And next up... We have Clarks, which I like. I really like selling Clarks. I feel like they always sell relatively quickly, maybe not super in demand, but this is just, you know, a classic little leather sandal. And I'm always sort of shopping off season. I'll pick up stuff if it's in season, but I am always kind of looking ahead too. And so on that same note, I got these little Born sandals. Born is a brand I'm pretty picky with because it doesn't always sell well, but these are genuine leather and you can't really see it, but this is so nicely padded. I know these are going to be super comfortable for somebody for like hiking or camping or something like that. And I love to sell these types of items that are just super functional and practical, especially right now. Okay, next up, I don't know if you can see it, but these have a, feels like calf, what are they? These are Donald, these are Donald J. Pliner. And the leather feels like that calf hair texture. That's the word I'm looking for. It's like that calf hair texture with a leather print. I mean, a leopard print. And again, you can see how thick the padding here is on the sole. It's just... It's going to be super comfortable. It's really well made. I've sold these before and I can't remember the exact style name. I think it's the Fifi or something. Does it? Yeah, Fifi. F-I-F-I. -F -I. Again, not a brand I pick up often. I'm very picky with Donald J. Pliner. 
they have a really good quality and they sell retail for high, but resale, they don't sell for me super well. They sit for a while. So these are what I call a dual purpose. And if these don't sell, these are my size and I have leopard is my weakness. So there's, those could always be for me, but, um, the brand is mixed blues. Here's the other one. The, I hope you can see these okay. But the reason I picked these up is, can you see this like lace up? It's big, it's, they're open, but they lace up and it just, I don't know, it reminds me of like that vintagey like Victorian vibe or like the prairie look. I can see these paired with like prairie, ugh, prairie dresses or, um, I don't know. I just like I just like them. They're leather. I believe they're vintage, but I'll have to look into that. Double check it before I list them. Okay. Next up, we have a pair of Rockport loafers, and these I picked up because I want to use my suede brush on them and see if I can get them looking a little nicer. I think that they're going to be good because they're overall a lightweight shoe, so I think that'll be comfortable, but they are genuine leather, so um, the price was good on these. And this one, don't judge me, I feel like this is so strange, you're going to be like, what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> these are Skechers Shape Ups, and... They are very big and clunky and kind of like a dad shoe, but a brown leather version and they're discontinued and I sell these quite regularly. I only pick them up if the soles are in good condition. I don't care too much about like, see how the uppers have that little bit of wear on the suede, but I mean the soles are like really good. These are going to be a solid pair of like walking shoes for somebody. And again, look at that cushion. <laughs> it's crazy. Those are gonna go on eBay. All right, next up, let me show you some of my vintage ones. Let's see, how are we gonna do this? So this is a square neck dress with that eyelet detailing. And it's just like, kind of like almost I don't know if sheath is the right word, but kind of like a semi-fitted style. And I just love that detailing and it's just kind of like a classic look. And I'm into the square neckline lately. So that was a pretty good, that was a pretty good pickup. This is more of just like an everyday type essential piece. It's Foot Joy. Oh, what was the brand on this one? This one was vintage wrapper and I guess I should share sizes shouldn't I um this is a vintage 910 this is a men's medium foot joy and why I pick this up is because I picture somebody golfing with it and just wearing it as like basically just a golfing jacket it'll be um a nice basic Okay, this is another one I was excited about. So this is a brand I normally wouldn't pick up. I've picked it up in the past and I'd consider most of my most of the ones I have left to be duds in this category, which means I will donate most of them by the end of January. But this one I wanted because it is Worthington, which isn't great at all, and which I would not pick up normally, but it's lambskin leather. And it cleaned up really nice. And it's also like that sort of trench coat style with the, see that? It's got the belted waist, the lining is clean. There's no tears, just some minimal signs of wear, maybe on the shoulders there. But just overall, it just looks really good. And I was excited to model this one too and also another dual purpose if nobody ends up actually wanting to purchase this it fits me it's an extra large i can 
you know, wear it to walk Bella or just have like another casual coat that's going to be super warm. And I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna have a really cold winter, so. Okay, we're almost to the end here. I've saved my absolute favorite for last. Um, yeah, this was a pretty cool one. This is Vintage Vanity Fair. Um, can you see that? So, sizing wise, I think I'll have to measure it and post that in the listing. But look at how it's like super long. Um, let me see if I can just put a picture out for this one. Yeah, I'll just put a picture out for it. But again, I love the leopard trim on it. You know how some leopard looks super tacky and then other leopard, it just looks nice. I feel like this is in that category of it just, I love the way it looks. Um, you really can't go wrong with like a classic black robe. I found very few spots. I washed this one, but I'd say the biggest downfall to this one is it's an attract, it's like a lint magnet. So no matter how many times I go over it with the lint thing, it just keeps collecting. And you see that? But otherwise, I think a really cool robe. Okay, the next one I've already shipped out, so I'll just include a picture of it. If you don't already know, I love selling and wearing these like half slips as skirts. I mean, I don't typically like really wear them, but I like to model them and if I if I had the need to wear one maybe, but um, the reason I picked this one up is because it had like that V center slit. The brand was Dynasty and it was polyester. I typically pick these up when they're one vintage and two 100% nylon, three made in the USA. But this one I picked up based off of style and it had kind of like that satiny sheen to it, which I liked and I loved the V slit again. So it was just like, okay, this is gonna style really cute. And that one sold pretty quick, like within a few days. Next up is a vintage, it's unmarked, so there is no brand, but it's definitely vintage. It has that like silvery sheen to it. And I love the buttons on it here. Let me see if I can kind of zoom in. I don't know, I just like them. They kind of look like little mirrors or something. So, this fits, this fits loose for a women's size extra large. I tried it on. Um, so it's either like a loose XL or a double XL, but I just like it for just being a little extra festive or a little extra, adds that just little extra touch to an outfit. So I thought that was fun. These next ones almost kind of surprised me. I went into an estate sale and it advertised 60s vintage style um, wardrobe. And so I was expecting a lot of vintage stuff, but she had a, a mix of modern and vintage. And um, I found this really cool Sundance sweater, but I, I, I swear I looked this thing over and over and over and I didn't find any spots. And I think what happened was when I checked out and I put it on the table, I think the table was dirty and it got the backs of the sleeves um, stained. And so I was gonna wash it anyway. So when I washed it, I just tried to get the stains out. And the worst part was I got the stains out, but I added new stains because the rack that I dried it on like created a like brownish rust colored stain, which was like, oh God. That was so that that was so bad because it was such a nice sweater. It was uh, Angora, and the brand was Sundance, which I like Sundance. I think they make really good quality pieces. So anyway, moving on. Other things she had in her closet were I know this is some sort of Chinese brand, and I don't typically pick up stuff that's like made in China, but I like the style of this. I like the color of it, and the quality didn't feel super super cheap it felt like kind of a mid-tier range almost like a mall brand so it'll be priced accordingly like i'll list it for 25 but it's never been used and i also like that it was a larger size and i just want i just want to style it too so on the same wavelength of that exact same thing this is another brand that's 
It's Nothing, the brand, but it's like a vegan leather. And it was the style of this one and also being on the larger side. I'd say this is like a US large. That's like a US XL. And I like the back seams of this too. And I like the long line um, look of it. I like that zipper detailing. I like that it has pockets. It just had a lot going for it. And again, I'll price it on the low end, like 25 because it's not a known brand or anything. And it's not high quality. It's like that mid-tier but I like the style and I didn't want to, I wanted to grab something else when I'm at estates I try to pick up several pieces so I thought these were the best three at that estate and last my absolute favorite is this very very Penny Lane style denim trench coat it's a size medium from Guess um, I'd say this was from either the late 80s or the early 90s, so like when Guess was in its heyday. And I just thought this jacket was so cool. Let's see if I can kind of show you. Yeah, I'll have to put a picture up. It's too long. But it was just so cool. It's, um, it's very Penny Lane-esque. And I know a lot of people are really into the faux fur, like oversized collar and cuffs right now. So I was so excited to pick this up. One of the other sellers at this particular store was like, that's a nice jacket. Can I see that? And I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. Like I could not leave this. It's so fun. She was like, yeah, that's really fun. Um, yeah, so that is going to wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed this haul. I hope you're out um, doing well and staying safe. And I don't think I'm going to see you guys before the holiday. So very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you all. And I will see you in the beginning of next year.